2020 is easily shaping up to be SeaWorld Entertainment's largest year ever because they're pretty much putting in a coaster at all of their parks. We knew about most of them because of some leaks that occurred a while back, including the coasters for both Busch Gardens parks, SeaWorld Orlando, and San Antonio, but the one that was left out was SeaWorld San Diego. Obviously, they're opening Title Twister for 2019, but we didn't hear anything about 2020, while all of these other leaks were about 2020. So that left out SeaWorld San Diego, and so I guess a lot of us just kind of assumed that they weren't getting anything major since they were getting Title Twister this year and they just got Electric Eel, but no, they are adding a roller coaster. This comes to us from behind the thrills. They just posted this article, shows some great pictures of what you can expect, kind of reveals what SeaWorld San Diego's long-term plans are. So I'm going to link to the article down below. Definitely go check that out. There's a lot of good information here. I'm not really going to talk about most of their other plans that they're talking about. I'm really going to focus on the roller coaster here. So first thing is it is called Mako and it is a B&M dive coaster. So obviously it shares the same name as the coaster at SeaWorld Orlando, which is a B&M hyper coaster. So this one is different. However, if you look at their current Manta, that is obviously different from SeaWorld Orlando's Manta. So that means now there are two Makos and two Mantas and makes it confusing for everyone. Come on, Six Flags, I mean SeaWorld. But that being said, I do think it is kind of a fitting name because they're kind of going to renovate their whole shark encounter area along with it. We do have this animation showing what you can kind of expect from it. It will not have the same color scheme as the one in Orlando. This one will be like a light teal color. kind of matches this color of the sky. And you may notice that that is actually the same color as Electric Eel. The real reason for that is because with SeaWorld San Diego, because of certain restrictions, they pretty much have to paint anything that is really tall the color of the sky so it kind of blends in that's why manta is a different color because it's low to the ground and they can get away with it this and electric eel will be the two tallest roller coasters in the park hence why you kind of have that sky color blue so let's kind of get into some quick stats for this we really only have one picture to show of what the layout is like so uh, there's not really much for me to discuss with that all we can really see is the lift hill turnaround drop Immelman, and looks like some sort of bank turn later in the layout. So we do not know what the entire ride experience will be like. We know it'll feature at least one inversion. The only stats we are given is that it's 153 feet tall, 143 foot drop. And as you can see by the picture, it will not be going into any sort of tunnel. It will have floorless trains and is the longest, tallest, and fastest dive coaster in California. Now, they can't say only dive coaster in California because Knott's is calling Hangtime a dive coaster, even though it is by Gerslauer and not B&M. So if we're going by what is typically seen as a dive coaster, aka a B&M dive coaster, this is the only one in California. Now, we do not know any type of restraint. We don't know if it will be the typical over-the-shoulder restraint or if it will be a vest restraint. You can see a train on the track, but it is blurred. You don't really know at all what it'll be like. But I mean, these dive coasters always typically have three rows. I wouldn't be surprised if these trains have six or eight across. This is more of a dive coaster along the size of some of the ones that we see in Europe, which are typically six seaters. To just give you an accurate idea of what we're looking at here, it'll be approximately 20 feet taller than Crake at Heidi Park. It'll be about 50 feet taller than Baron 1898 at Efteling. And most closely, it is almost the exact height as Valkyria at Liseberg, but Valkyria does have the bigger drop. Valkyria was the last dive coaster to be built and that did have the vest restraints. So I could see it being something along the lines of what you can see with Valkyria. I imagine that an official announcement from SeaWorld San Diego is not too far away. They might wait till after Tidal Twister opens, but I could also see them jumping the gun and announcing it sooner rather than later. Because SeaWorld San Diego has not posted about it yet on any of their social medias. This was just announced at a private event revealing the park's long-term plans. So we will have to wait and see how long before SeaWorld San Diego starts posting about it. But next thing I really want to talk about is the location of where this is going. For this, I'll be using Google Earth to show you approximately where we can expect it. The main thing is that it is going next to Journey to Atlantis. If you've been to SeaWorld San Diego, then you know that this park is landlocked. The park is pretty much surrounded by a parking lot and then water, so they don't have too much room to build out. However, they have been getting very creative lately fitting in Electric Eel 
Tidal Twister, and now this Dive Coaster. The amount that this park is expanding is crazy. Based on this graphic, it looks like you'll be taking up the parking lot immediately next to the station for Journey to Atlantis, because that is really on the edge of the park. And so the dive coaster will be going in part of that parking area that borders the edge of the park. So they'll pretty much turn that section of parking lot into the park, and Mako will now be the edge of the park instead of Journey to Atlantis. They'll definitely have to rework some of that midway space around Journey to Atlantis, but they also have to be strategic with how they fit this in because they can't really build to the right because it bumps up against a wild arctic. So again, they're being very careful with how they fit in this attraction. And there's definitely the space for it. I mean, it just comes at the cost of some parking spaces. But at the end of the day, it's definitely worth it. So to just kind of wrap things up, this announcement really took me off guard. I was not expecting this. But it does amaze me how fast SeaWorld Entertainment is really pushing to put out these new coasters. We heard that they'd be spending millions of dollars each year to put in new attractions at all of their parks, and they were not not joking. Literally every major park in the SeaWorld Entertainment chain is getting a coaster in 2020. That is incredible, especially considering that some parks are getting a coaster this year. And I'll be real, a dive coaster was not my initial thought of like, oh, what would SeaWorld San Diego's next coaster be? A dive coaster was not my initial, oh, that's what they should get. But now that I've like seen the animation and where it's going, I actually think it's a pretty solid fit. Because if you look at the coasters in this park, you have the water coaster with Journey to Atlantis and Electric Eel Manta are both launch coasters. Mako will have a traditional lift hill, it'll have a vertical drop, it'll scare the pants off of the GP, and most importantly is that it's easy to market. Especially after all the backlash that SeaWorld has gotten from the public, it makes sense that they're putting an emphasis on coasters while still updating their animal attractions. So I say bravo to SeaWorld, I love what they're doing. I think it's very smart and I really hope that it works out for them. So that's gonna do it for this analysis of Mako coming to SeaWorld San Diego in 2020. Again, sorry we don't know all of the details surrounding the coaster yet. Once we know more and have an official layout, I'll be sure to let you guys know. But until then, stay tuned for more analyses here at Coaster Studios and I'll catch you guys later.